Almost two weeks ago, on the 1st of December, at the start of the Fast of Nativity, my reflection as a way of introduction quoted the hymns on the Nativity by our Father among the Saints, St. Ephraim the Syrian. This week's reflection will have more on the hymns and homily on the Nativity by our Father among the Saints, St. Ephraim. As you all know, Ephraim is so aptly called the harp of the Holy Spirit and is undoubtedly the greatest poet and theologian that the Syrian Church ever produced. Ephraim was not only a well-known figure in the Syriac-speaking world, but also had a great reputation in the Greek East as well as the Latin West. Within the patristic age itself, Ephraim's reputation as a holy man, poet and a theologian was widely known far beyond his homeland. I begin this reflection quoting from a hymn of St. Ephraim used in the liturgy which goes, Brik firo darchen wasaba kafnuthen morio, brik tobo the menchel mlo kul snikuthen. Blessed is the fruit who lowered himself to assuage our hunger. Blessed is the good one who right away fulfills our need. Saint Ephraim, in his hymn on the Nativity, says, "Glory to him." who came to us by his firstborn. Glory to the silence that spoke by his voice. Glory to him who sowed his light in the darkness and was reproached in his hidden state and covered his secret things. He also stripped and took off from us the clothing of our filthiness. Glory be to him on high who mixed the salt in our minds, his leaven in our souls. His body became bread to make alive our dead state. Glory to him who could never be measured by us. Our heart is too small for him and our mind is too feeble. He makes foolish our littleness by the riches of his wisdom. Again, St. Ephraim says in his homily on the Nativity, This is the day when the high gate opened to us for our prayers. Let us also open the gates to the seekers who have strayed but sought forgiveness. This Lord of Natures today was transformed contrary to his nature. It is not too difficult for us also to overthrow our evil will. Today, the deity imprinted itself on humanity so that humanity might also be cut into the seal of deity. His swaddling clothes gave a robe of glory to human beings. We know what it is to act contrary to the will of God and His Church. God's true companionship is with those who keep His commandments and obey His will. In order to do so, we need to cling to the life of the church. The fasting seasons conditions us to be self-effacing and self-disciplined. It challenges us to not only control our bodies, but to reflect on the state of our relationship with Jesus Christ. We fast before the great feast of the Nativity in order to prepare ourselves for the celebration of our Lord's birth. As in the case of the Great Lent, the Nativity Fast is one of preparation 
during which we focus on the coming of the Savior. By fasting, we shift our focus from ourselves to others, spending less time worrying about what to eat, when to eat, how much to eat, and so on, in order to use our time in prayer and caring for the poor. We learn through fasting that we gain control over things which we sometimes allow to control us. We are also challenged to fast from sin, from gossip, from jealousy, from anger, and from all those things. While well within our control, we all too often allow to control us. This fast is for the transformation of the world, and it is through the fast that the faithful are called into attentiveness and anticipation. We who have fallen far from God through the magnitude of our sin are called nonetheless to be close to Him. We who run afar off are called to return to Him. The fast calls us to take our place in creation, to realize that, despite all our infinite unworthiness, Christmas is a miracle for our soul. We will never fully comprehend this ineffable mystery, but God's grace will help us to understand the great mystery of the Incarnation, the awe-inspiring mystery of God Himself becoming a man. This fast allows us to draw near to Christ in faith. My dear brothers and sisters, fasting is not dieting. Fasting is not about keeping a Christian kosher. Fasting is about hunger and humility, which is increased as we allow ourselves to become weak. Fasting is about allowing our heart to break. As we know, God does not despise a broken heart. Glory to God, who has shown himself to us. I would like to end this reflection by quoting parts of the homily on the nativity by St. Ephraim. St. Ephraim says, This day resembles the first day of creation. On that day created things were established. On this the earth is renewed, and because of Adam it is blessed, having been cursed because of him. Even Adam, through sin, introduced death into the created world. Creation's Lord gave us, by His only begotten, through Mary, new life again. To such an extent did God humble Himself, for the sake of His servant, who had exalted Himself and transgressed the commandment, at the advice of the evil one, the murderer. The giver of that commandment has now humbled Himself to raise us up. Praise to that mercy on high, which has been brought down to men on earth, so that the sick world might be healed by the physician who has shone forth in creation. May the mercies of our Lord God and Saviour Jesus Christ be with us for the remainder of this fast. May we become more Christ-like and live out the gospel and be living witnesses for Christ in this world. All glory and honor, praise and thanksgiving to the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one true God, now and always, unto ages of ages. Amen. Oh